Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today we're going to be working on writing two column proofs in geometry. One of the challenges in um, answering problems in geometry is writing a two column proof and that's what we're going to be working on today. So first, a proof is an argument that uses logic to establish the truth of a statement. So in a mathematical uh, concept, we need to make sure that we are understanding the terms we're using in our theorems, properties, that will help us in writing the two column proof that's what we're going to be using in today's lesson. A two column proof lists numbered statements on the left and corresponding numbered reasons or justifications on the right. Now these statement, statements show the logical order of the proof and that's what we're going to be working on in our problem for today. But first we need to review on some of the properties that we commonly use when we are answering solving linear equation or balancing equations. So in an equation or a basic algebra problem, if we have 2x plus 5 is equal to 8, to be able to solve for x, we know that we need to subtract 5 on both sides first. So that step is what we call as the subtraction property because we use the operation of subtraction so that we can have x by itself. So these are basically the terms or mathematical terms with its corresponding description so that we would know what corresponds to the mathematical process and how we write it out in words. So it's basically similar to translations, but this time we are translating our mathematical procedure into words. And we're also going to be using the reflexive property, symmetric property, transitive and substitution property in some of our proofs for today. So let's start with a basic statement, and our equation is 5x plus 12 is equal to 47, and we, all we need to do is to write a two-column proof showing how we go from line 1 to line 2 and line 2 to line 3. Pretty simple, but the question is, how are we going to fill in the reasons that we have here so that we'll be able to understand how to write a two-column proof? So we're going to start from the basics. So it's always going to be difficult at the beginning, but we know that through practice, we'll be able to achieve expertise by constant practicing of a skill. And that's what we're going to be working on. So for the first step, we know that we have 5x plus 12 is equal to 47. And this first line right here is the given. And the step or the first step is always the easiest step in writing a two column proof because all you need to do is to establish your given problem. And for line two, we have 5x is equal to 35. Now the question is, how did we go from here to line 2? And to be able to articulate that, we know that all we did was we subtracted 12 on both sides. And since we use that step, we can call it or use the subtraction property of equality to be able to state the reason how we, go, how we get from 1 to 2. So that is our second reason. Now our third reason is to show how we get from 2 to 3 and 3 is x is equal to 7. And to be able to do that, we know that we simply divided both sides by 5. Therefore, our line 3 reason would be the division property of equality. And this is how basic it is to write a two-column proof. Now, the challenge is to remember as many properties as you can so that we'll be able to complete our right-hand side of our column proofs 
in our method. So let's have this second example. This time, it's going to be a longer two-column proof because we need to show how we get from line one to line two, line three, line four, and line five. So from the first step, what we did was from 7x minus 10, quantity 5 plus 3x is equal to 20, um, 2x, we're able to go from here to here by simply multiplying negative 10 in our grouping symbol 5 plus 3x. So we multiplied, also known as the distributive property. So we can use that as our reason number two, which is using multiply or distributive property or multiplication property of equality to achieve line two. And from line two to line three, notice that we combined 7x and negative 30x. And by subtracting them or combining them, now we have negative 23x minus 50 is equal to 2x. So we can use combining like like terms as our reason for line number three. So we simplify the expression or combine like terms to achieve line number three. And from line number three to line number four, notice that what we did was we added 23x to 2x. That's why we have 25x. So since we added those terms, we can use addition property of equality. And for our last step, we simply divided 25 on both sides so that x will be by itself and it's equal to negative 2. So the last step would be division property of equality. So this is how we warm up and uh, try to get comfortable in writing a two-column proof by using a skill that we are most used to, which is answering a simple linear equation. And now we're moving on to a more challenging steps and procedures that uses geometry. So we're gonna be using the properties of equality in angles, and we have reflexive property, symmetric property, and transitive property, which states that if we have angle measures given by A, B, or C, these are its corresponding corresponding segment lengths or products or results by using these properties. So how are we going to use these properties in this problem? So we have here a problem on angles and we are given that angle one and angle two have the same measurement. So that means we need to prove that angle BAG B, A, G is the same or equal to the measurement of angle E, A, C. And angle E, A, C is given by this pink angle right here. And how are we going to prove that they are congruent or they have the same measurement? So the first line is finished. And we know that the first line in any two-column proof is the easiest way or the easiest line to write, and that is writing the given information, which is angle 1 and angle 3 are equal, or their measurements are equal. Now, notice that in this relationship, the measurement of angle 2 is related to B, A, G, and E, A, C. So to be able to establish that fact, we can say that the measurement of angle two is equal to the measurement of angle two using the reflexive property. And we're writing it down to establish a relationship between angle one and angle three, which is related to the middle angle that we have here in our diagram. So that is reason number two. And for reason number three, what we can do is to establish the relationship between BAG and angle one and two. And notice that BAG and angle one and two is simply the sum of one and two. So we can write it down as our third reason, which is Measurement of angle 1 plus measurement of angle 2 is the same as the measurement of angle 3 and the measurement of angle 2 since the middle angle is related to 1 and 3. And we use the addition property of equality to be able to go from or to be able to establish 
the relationship between those two angles. And now that we have the sum of one and two, similar to the sum of three and two, we can now write that BAG is similar to angle one plus two. And similarly, angle EAC is the sum of angle three and angle two. And by doing so, we're able to establish line four using angle addition postulate. And from here, down to the last line, since we're able to establish that one and two, or the sum of one and two is the same as the sum of three and two, all we need to do is to use angle or the notation for angle BAG in relation to this two angle. So measurement of BAG and the measurement of EAC from line four are simply the same using the substitution property. So this is how we're able to establish these proof by writing out the reasons from the property that we use in geometry. And that is what you're going to be working on in the number bender challenge of the day, which is you need to show the reasons how we got from step one or line one all the way to line five using the properties in geometry that we just did from our previous example. And again, when working with problem involving Proofs in geometry, practice is essential. It's always going to be awkward and difficult at the beginning, but once you have established your confidence, through constant practice, it will be really easy. So practice so that you will gain the confidence you need to be able to conquer this geometric challenge that is writing two column. This is Dr. E and see you again next time. Bye!